early morning sawdust run. Um, we got a really good start this morning. It's about 10 o'clock right now. We actually had to go to the farthest away sawdust place again. Um, unfortunately, we couldn't get it at the closest place. We're hoping this is the last time we have to get it this far away. And by the time spring hits and summer, we'll be able to get it at the closer place because they won't be burning it anymore. But this week they weren't letting any go. So we are gonna at least have to get some here today. I think we're almost loaded. We've only been here for a few minutes, but it's the guy who does it really fast. So Brent is out packing it down. Um, I did want to show you guys, we had to start the sawdust truck today. We had to jump it because it's very cold. It's like 15 degrees, but then there's a wind chill that's bringing it down to like zero. So very, very chilly. Kind of a harsh reality since the nice weather we've had. But the sun is warm and the sawdust truck's heat's working, so I'm not going to complain. Um, but we did have to jump it. So one of you guys, you guys are so amazing. You're just always sending us really awesome stuff. So one of you guys sent us this, this little boosting pack and it is just amazing. I cannot recommend this thing enough. It started the sawdust truck like that. Um, you just charge it. I just charged it. It has like a USB charger and you just charge it in your vehicle. Um, so I just hooked it right into my like cigarette lighter and I charged that. We're moving. That's weird. He must've been pushing us. Um, so I charged that up and we stuck it on the sawdust truck and it started it um, And then we did have to shut it off So it, when we went to turn it back on it wouldn't start again So it jumped it twice and it's a decent size engine. It's a six liter engine So it's decent size and this had absolutely no trouble starting it. So I really love this We're gonna get a lot of use out of this because we're always jumping the sawdust truck um, It just doesn't get run enough to actually charge itself up. So um, we are gonna be putting a new battery on it this year But just because um, this one has side posts and it's a pain in the butt to hook on to so we are going to be changing it over to a top post. You can see it's just, it's a pain to just have to hook it in like that. So we're going to be changing it over to a top post anyway. Um, hopefully. So I think we're all loaded. I believe we're almost loaded. So I'll move over. <sighs> it's already starting to get cold in here because I turned the heat down.
weather. Even wearing gloves, I can't feel my fingers. Nice in here. It is nice in here. Good thing.
yard again, um, which is where we've done the last three loads, but we used everything except for a couple of shovelfuls right there. So Brent is headed down to get a dry bale right now. We need to take that over to the heifers. Um, we fed them three rat bales in a row, so we're gonna feed them a dry one. Um, and they haven't been fed this morning, so we're gonna head right over with that. We're just gonna pop one in the back of Brent's truck and then roll it off into the barn. was good because we didn't have to turn on the generator or anything that would have really stunk but Actually fixed the barn door on the heifer barn um, the other day the nut actually didn't pull through on it it was actually um, it just threaded off so we threaded that back on and um, it took quite a bit to lift it up but Brent got in the Kubota bucket and he, um, hooked that back up so that was good oh. cold out there isn't it yeah not that bad it's just that wind is I know I was just saying how he fixed the doors on the other barn it's good uh, you're good. So now that we got them all fed, we're going to head over um, and see if it's hard enough to pick up some bales in a field that's our farthest field away. Um, we're going to go see if we can pick those bales up in there. The ground might not be hard enough yet, but I think it probably is. So uh, probably going to have to close the doors because it's really windy. So do you want these doors closed? No. No? Okay. pick those up and just yeah you could just truck them down there think if I just park off to the side yep. up there a little ways just be right. you know right you hear somewhere yeah just right off to the side there yeah 
I don't think you would make it up there. No, it's pretty steep. You would be able to if the snow was all gone, but. Okay, so we think that we can get those bales um, if I just park on the side of the road and Brent trucks them down. We're gonna do two loads. So Brent's gotta put the grabbers on the Kubota, which by the way, we did get it running better. Um, the idling problem that it had on it, what it turned out to be, the foot throttle was actually bent a little bit. So Brent reached down and, and pulled on it a little bit and it kind of bent it back and then it revved right down and it's completely normal acting now. So somehow that got bent out of shape and I'm not really sure how that would have happened, but now it's running much better, which I am so happy about because it really annoys me when a tractor is like revved right up and there's no need of it being revved right up. So that's fine. It wasn't turned out to be nothing. So that's good. So he'll get those grabbers on and then I'll drive the truck and we'll head right over and load some bales, but we do have to dump the sawdust first. Something satisfying about the whole, how flat it is when you open it. That's $135 a load, so that'll go us a week. Um, depending on if the cows go outside a little bit more, it might last 10 days, um, but as cold as it is, they probably won't be going outside much, so probably in another week we'll need another load. Uh, but that's what four quart of sawdust looks like. I think we can put the snowmobiles away. Yeah. Even if we do get snow, there's not enough to go snowmobiling. You never know, we might get... Okay. Where are the grabbers? Huh? Where are the grabbers? Oh, yeah. oh okay.
is a harsh way to come into the world, huh? Yes, you're okay. We'll, we'll take you up to see Mom. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Yeah, she's okay, Mom. Here, she's all right. Or he's all right. We'll check. She, cute little girl. Yes, let's take you up to see Mom. Good girl, you did a good job. Just a minute, okay? There you go. Good job, Mom. <laughs> Cute little heifer. So it has been two days and we still have not got that hay picked up. The last couple days have just been super windy and snowy and cold. We did not need the hay bad enough to want to go pick it up in that kind of weather. Plus, we've been very busy. So last night we had one cow calve. Um, she's laying right over there sleeping right now. So she calved, she had trouble with that and we did have to help her a little bit. The calf wasn't backwards or anything, it just, um, one of the legs was coming and the other leg was not. So when we reached in to figure out what was going on, you could feel the head and everything so we knew it wasn't backwards. Um, but it had its elbow kind of coming out instead of its leg, so it took quite a while to reach in her and get her repositioned so that both her feet were coming out. After that, she calved on her own very easily, no problems. Um, the calf and mom are doing very well. It's a big, beautiful bull calf. I'll go show you guys. And this morning, we just had our brown Swiss half her calf. This is her second one. She calved on her own as well. Um, very easy calving. She was only like 30 minutes, I think. This is the big boy that was born last night. He's already eaten his colostrum, so he's... Oh, he didn't get up. A little bit sleepy, but mom did a really good job cleaning him off. He looks like he got shampooed and blow dried. <laughs> he's all like fuzzy. Um, so he's really healthy. He's a really nice looking calf. Got beautiful coloring. Just a handsome little man, aren't you? Between having fresh cows to milk out and calves to feed, um, we've had plenty to do to keep us busy for these last two days. There is another cow calving as we speak. Um, she's down in our maternity pen. It's actually in front of the entrance to the free stall. There's three gates there and we just kind of corner them off and it gives you a 10 by 12 area that you can just fill with sawdust and the cow can calve in there. She has plenty of room to move around. If we're right here and they start calving, like during milking, a dry cow comes in and they start calving, we will leave them right where they are. We make sure they're in a stall alone. So if there's a cow next to them, we will move them. So they have both stalls to kind of stretch out and get comfortable. And since we're gonna be right there, we can keep a really close eye on them. But like I said, if we're not gonna be around, we do like to have them be down there. Just so we know they have plenty of space to be comfortable and calve comfortably. Um, I would go show you guys, but she's one of those cows that doesn't really like you being around when she's calving. She just finally laid down and went and checked on her. She keeps getting up and laying down, getting up and laying down. So Brent's gonna keep a close eye on her. He's gone right now, but he will be back. So he's gonna keep an eye on her. So yeah, tonight we're gonna be pretty busy. We've got three fresh cows, or we will have three fresh cows. Two of them are not so good about being milked. The brown swish I showed you, this is only her second calf, so she's still kind of iffy. She likes to kick a little bit. And the other cow, she's just always been a kicker. I think this is her fourth calf and she's just she's always just been a kicker so um the one that's calving now i know she's a pretty decent cow she's had five and it's just old hat to her so she's pretty calm so that shouldn't be a problem but yeah so thank you guys so much for watching even though things didn't really go as planned that's pretty much the normal around here so keep it real keep farming and i hope you'll join us in the next video bye